So within your div tags, you're often going to want to use ID or class in order to create unique names that can be styled using cascading style sheets. So here in this example, I have an ID for header and then a class for section and another class uh, for, for a second section. And maybe in my cascading style sheets, I want to style these two areas the same so I can give them the same class name. But then here in my ID, I want to style it differently and that content's going to be treated. Maybe I want to uh, treat it differently in that maybe I want to center it and make it bold because it's at the top of the page. So let me just uh, give a quick overview on ID and class on these two attributes that are used uh, often with the div tag. The ID attribute is used to specify a style for a single unique element. So for example here, Technically, you really aren't supposed to use this ID equals header. You're not supposed to use that name anymore on the page, just once. So you, you declare one area with that ID name. It's, it's supposed to be a unique thing. And I think of that as remembering the ID is like remembering a uh, social security number, and each person has a unique ID. So each area with an ID would have also unique. Now, the class attribute is used to specify a style for a group of elements. So unlike that ID attribute, the class attribute is most often used on several elements, as we see on lines 11 and 12. In these cases, I'm using class. I think of class like a group of people, um, where we might all be sitting in, in the same room. And in that case, it's okay to go ahead and um, style this in a similar way. These are classes. So let's take a look at an XHTML example. Now, ID and class are used still quite a bit in HTML5. HTML5 semantic tags, I believe part of the attempt is kind of to move away from using ID and class. But there's many times that you still want to have a unique area. Um, it just makes it kind of easier to code with your cascading style sheets to continue to use ID and class. Uh, probably use it a little less than we may have in XHTML, but still used quite a bit. So here we have, um, in this case, ID equals header. This will be at the top of the page. I've coded a div tag. I've given an ID header. So in my cascading style sheets, I'll reference this header, and then I can give it that style that I prefer. You see when I select it over here from the opening to the closing, it highlights that on my right-hand side. You can see what area that's selected. I have this whole area called section. Section actually has a lot of elements nested inside of it. Let me go ahead and drag all the way down. We can see how much that highlights here. I think that should do it. So now on my right hand side, I have all this section highlighted. And you'll see there's different articles in here. Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4. Each of these articles just is a name I've given to these different areas within the section. So for example, there's an education um, uh, area uh, within the section. I w went ahead and called it Article 4. I purposefully chose that name Article because Article is an HTML5 element. Now since I'm using ID, I called each article a different uh, number, Article 1, 2, 3, and 4, which I admit defeats the purpose a little bit, but I'm just trying to explain the basics of this at, at this time. So a, an easier way might have been to use class and then just call uh, and then just use the name article over and over again. And that would have been fine it's because class, you could have used that same name. ID, you couldn't. It has to be unique. So that's why I gave the number there. Okay, at the very bottom of the page, we have our footer. And um, again, there's actually a footer tag in HTML5. But since I'm using XHTML, I just gave, gave it an ID of footer. Okay, so that's just an example without using any cascading st uh, style sheets of how ID and class are set up. And then in the next step, we would start to now apply our styles.